Hey everyone, welcome back QAC TV. We're talking to two special people today. We have Heather and Rhonda from Compass Regional Hospice. And we have a lot of stuff to talk about, don't we? Yes, we do, Bruce. Yes, we do. And it's all exciting. So we have very big news, mm -hmm. and that's Compass Regional Hospice serves a region, and right. we're making that even easier. Correct. Because we've done what? We've, we've opened a new facility in Kent County. We serve Queen Anne's, Kent, and Caroline counties, mm -hmm. and up to just a month ago, Kent County did not have its own facility for patients to be able to stay in their own county if they needed to have a place to stay other than mm -hmm. home under hospice services. So we um, partnered up with the hospital in Chestertown, University of Maryland, um, Shore Medical Center in Chestertown, and we were able to renovate a four-bed area there in the hospital that used to be the old pediatric unit um, to become a hospice unit <clears throat> for the residents of Kent County. That's great. Yeah. So it's opened. Um, it's been opened a week ago Monday, um, and we were full at one point in time already. It took two days to fill the four beds. Mm -hmm. um, so there's obviously a great need there in the county that we're serving. So you have that open, but that doesn't take away from the fact that we still have great regional hospice care all around. Right. So where are the other buildings that we have? Um, we Here in Centerville is our six-bed facility. Um, Centerville is a little bit different than the other uh, facilities because we have two different levels of care in Centerville. It's a higher acuity of care, so if somebody has symptoms that can't be managed at home or a home-like environment, they can come in there and we have nursing around the clock mm -hmm. and also medical directors that see the patients until their symptoms get managed. Right. Um, and we have exciting news for Centerville, too, because we are in the process of expansion. So we're, we're taking our six beds to ten beds. This is breaking news for me. You didn't even tell me this before Breaking we went news. Yeah. Breaking news. Yeah. And the other exciting thing is, and I'll let Rhonda talk in a bit about our grief services, but at one point in time, our, our center at 255 Comet Drive in Centerville was built for all of our staff, meaning mm -hmm. all of our administrative staff, as well as the staff that goes into the patient's homes. Because of course we see most patients in their own homes. Right. Um, and then we had the six bed facility there. Well, we grew so quickly when we regionalized, especially into Kent and Caroline counties, and just getting the word out about hospice services mm -hmm. and our grief services, that we were really busting at the seams in that building. And people were in two, two and three people in one office. So we purchased the building on Corsival, which the county planning and zoning was in, mm -hmm. at 160 Corsival, to move all of our staff that goes into patients' homes and all of our administrative staff so that we could, in our renovations at the Comet Drive facility, develop a state-of-the-art grief services um, center called mm -hmm. our Hope and Healing Center. And again, Rhonda will talk more about our grief services in a bit. Right. So, so you guys are just growing thing. everywhere. Yes. Yeah, so you guys went from working as close as we are right now to having your own offices, yes. maybe. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we went from, you know, a couple years ago, uh, employing about 20 people um, in the county. Mm -hmm. And now we have almost 100 employees. Wow. So you're we're growing we're, fast. For a large nonprofit. Right, so what's next? Do you know yet? Mm, I can't tell. <laughs> oh, breaking news next time you're on. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something new going yeah, on at Compass Regional Hospital. That's awesome. Yeah. And we had talked about the grief and, and all the services you guys do. So what's been going on, Rhonda? What do we have good to offer people in the area? Well, actually, I mean, I, I feel like that's something that we're doing is continually growing what we're able to offer. Mm -hmm. um, for a long time, I think one of the misconceptions was that our grief services were only for those who have had a loved one under hospice care. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest parts of our grief program is the fact that we serve the community at large. So for those who have experienced a sudden tragic death, um, we have grief services for, for everyone. And as we continue to grow, our vision is to be, to be able to offer um, different kinds of um, healing modalities. Not everybody's into talk therapy, yeah. whether it's one-on-one -on -one counseling or support groups. So being able to um, offer like healing workshops that are on a more creative end, um, things like yoga, um, and for some people maybe even things like healing touch yeah. sounds a lot more comfortable um, when it comes to taking care of themselves while they're on that grief journey. Yeah, so we great. continue to add um, and create a menu of, of choices 
for those who are hurting. Yeah, you're, so you're growing in other ways too, yeah. like even your, your expansion yeah. of you know, how to, how mm -hmm. to handle the situation. That's great, that's yeah. nice to hear. Yeah. A lot of people want different things. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just to interject back to the hospice centers, we were remiss in mentioning that we have another facility in Caroline County. Yeah, of course. Um, Caroline Hospice Foundation owns the building, but we staff it 24 hours a day and provide all the services. Mm -hmm. So we're a, Caroline County has their own facility, Queen Anne's does, and now Kent does. So right. that's exciting. Right. So three <laughs> options for mm -hmm. all the, the new services and all the new healing. And, mm -hmm. and it's a great way to, to help heal the community and the region. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when it comes to all the work that you guys do, sometimes you need a little bit of help, volunteers mm -hmm. and helping money. So what do you ladies do for that? Um, well, we have uh, lots of different events mm -hmm. annually. Um, they're always in the paper or on Facebook. Um, please like us on Facebook. Yes. You can go to our website at www.compassregionalhospice.org to find out about our events. You can donate online, um, become a volunteer. We have all of that um, on our website. You can give us a call at 443-262-4100 at our main office. Um, and anybody would be happy to help um, navigate in any way that you'd like to help. Um, <clears throat> we also do mailings for fundraising annually, um, and we um, are constantly looking for volunteers and people to help us because, um, you know, people give of their, their time, talents, and treasures, and we really need all three of those at Compass Regional Hospice. So we have estate treasures, right? And that's affiliated with you guys. Yes, uh, our estate treasures resale shop is located at Kent Town Market, in Kent Island, um, and it's a resale shop it's for clothing, um, some small household goods, and um, that raises us uh, over $100,000 a year, Shoot. and it is run solely by volunteers. There's not one paid staff that works in that shop. So we have hundreds of amazing volunteers um, that dedicate their time to um, ensuring that we're able to pay the rent there, yeah. and also um, fundraise lots of money right. annually. <clears throat> so when you're looking at volunteers, maybe they're not sure how they can help. Mm -hmm. This is an easy way if they just want to give their time yes. to really help Compass Regional Hospice out. Absolutely. There's so many areas where people can volunteer, mm -hmm. whatever their comfort level is. Right. Not everybody feels comfortable providing um, support like in the patient care right. exactly. arena, but yeah. they're happy to answer a phone or volunteer at a state treasurer's. Yeah. And again, I want to just say that our grief services are provided free of charge to anybody in the community in who counties. needs them. And one of the things that we are very proud of is our relationship or partnership with the school systems in mm -hmm. all three counties. And I'll turn that over to Rhonda yeah. to talk about that. Yeah, at this moment, mm -hmm. we are providing grief support to students either through one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions or through group support in over 16 schools in three counties to over 140 students. So at this moment in time, that's the amount of students that we're reaching. It's amazing. It is amazing, yeah. It's taken us a while, you know, to be able to, to get into the schools and to be able to offer this these kinds of services, but we're really, um, we really feel fortunate that they've allowed us to come in and provide this specialized level of support to kids who are grieving. Yeah, and grief, like other things, there's a stigma that comes with it, and people don't necessarily feel like I'm a normal 8-year-old child mm -hmm. or even a normal 30-year-old. I've experienced this loss. Nobody else knows how I'm feeling. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, especially with the opioid um, epidemic that we're having and people are losing family members to drug overdoses and, unfortunately, suicides and car accidents, all traumatic, um, you know, ways of losing somebody and we just want to make sure the community knows that we are there for them um, and that there um, is no shame in reaching out for grief services and support. Um, it's confidential um, and because we have so many different modalities to offer people, if you're um, comfortable in a private setting with one-on-one -on -one counseling, we have that. If you're comfortable in a grief um, support group, we have that. So. Just what I want to say to the community is just reach out. 
So we also have veteran services, right, Heather? We do. Um, we have a veterans program through the um, National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization. That is our national organization for hospice services. Um, they started a veterans program years ago, um, and hospices that want to um, be involved in it, there's different levels. There's one through four, mm -hmm. and you, you step up depending on how many services you're providing to veterans. Um, and we are level four, which is the highest um, to be a veterans-centric organization. And we um, really find it that taking care of veterans can be very unique, that you can obviously look at a veteran possibly that has served in a war that is going to undergo the same end-of-life um, feelings and care that somebody that wasn't a veteran has. So we're very... Um, concerned about that and um, always looking for ways to engage and make sure that they're getting the appropriate um, counseling and care. But one of the things that um, we're most proud of in our veterans program is that we have veteran-centric volunteers. Mm -hmm. So there are people who have been veterans themselves, um, goes through some specific training. But also we do, in uh, not, not only in the home environment, but in our hospice facilities, we do a veteran honoring ceremony. Um, so if it's a veteran, um, they get a, a lap blanket, they get a certificate, and most of all, our staff gathers around them and their families to thank them for um, serving our country and all that they gave of themselves. And oftentimes, our, what we hear from them is it's the first time they've ever been thanked in their lives. And it's very touching. Yeah, that sounds like a beautiful moment to see. It yeah. is. And in our facilities, um, not we do that, but also there are um, flag hangers outside of each patient room, one on each side, and the U.S. flag is um, hung up and flies the entire time that they're there, but also the branch of service that they served in. Oh, cool. So that That's also neat. is very touching. And just, you know, it's... it's um, it's uh, conversational provoking when mm -hmm. other people come in and say, yeah. oh, you know, you were, you were a Marine, right. and, you yeah. know, they, they get to tell their story. That's great. And you talked about the volunteers being some military. That must be yes. amazing for them to be able to give that, yes. that kind of support for other uh, and veterans. And for the, for the um, both ways, but for the patient, knowing that that volunteer experience right, yeah. something similar to them. Mm -hmm, yeah, they went what I went through, they know me better mm -hmm. than anyone else maybe. That's a beautiful thing. And one other exciting thing that you have going on is Camp New Dawn. Yes. So tell us about that, Rhonda. Um, Camp New Dawn is our annual grief retreat for children, teens, and families. And it happens every August um, out at Camp Pacoma. Mm -hmm. And it's a four-day, three-night retreat that includes um, actually five different programs. Um, we uh, host a um, program that provides um, support to those kids who are grieving between the ages of six and 17. Um, and part of that is our teen group, which is actually our largest group yeah. um, of kids at camp, which is we're very proud of that because it's hard to get teens to go to yes, camp, yes. let alone a it's grief camp. Or anything. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So um, they arrive on Saturday and they spend just about three days going to support groups that are um, age appropriate. Right. And they um, make special relation, they create special relationships with kids who understand exactly what they're going through and uh -huh. they can connect with. Um, and then we have an adults only retreat. So while the kids are kind of getting their um, support that is specifically designed for them, adults, those adults who are caring for them, they're getting grief support that's specifically designed for them. And they're also spending time with other adults that may be facing the same kinds of challenges since the, the death of a loved one, right. like being a single parent now. Um, maybe it's a grandmother or a grandfather raising a grandchild because of you know their child's death and then um, after our closing ceremony for the kids portion of the camp we actually have a family camp so we kind of roll right into oh, that wow. yeah well we discovered about five or six years ago that um, our family camp numbers were starting to dwindle somewhat it's hard to get people to buy into um, how beneficial 
a grief retreat for the whole family can be, mm -hmm. but it's so beneficial for them to, uh, to um, actually learn how to you know, certain coping skills and they, and then, you know, do that together, a, grand, a family that heals together. So what we did was we piggybacked on the kids portion. And what we have found is once those kids are there, it's a lot easier for families to kind of just roll right into the family portion. Yeah. And it's been very successful. We're real proud of the results. And then we have a mini camp for children ages three through six mm -hmm. who are too young to spend the night. So right. we're, we're trying our best to provide grief support to all ages um, of, of family members in a family unit. And so that happens every August. Um, we average somewhere around 80 kids every summer. Mm -hmm. Do we have a lot of repeat kids, do you see? They or? are a lot. We, we look at the whole picture. Mm -hmm. we, we recognize the fact that kids aren't going to resolve their grief, if you will, in one trip to exactly. summer camp. That, and that's exactly what I was yeah. thinking, right. So um, we do, we kind of cap it at three times that they can return. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that we will look at the entire story, this, the scenario that's going on in their life. It's not unusual for us to see a child, say at the age of nine, that's lost a parent and come for a couple of years. And then we don't see them for a couple of years, but then they're on the brink of teenagehood and milestones without yes. this uh -huh. parent. And so the meaning of that death, that loss has completely changed for them and they want to come back. And so because we're looking at a developmentally um, different child, really, we allow them to come back a couple of more times. Because right, so it's going to be brand new, the, the, will, everything they walk that's through. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. And um, we couldn't do what we do without the support of our community. It's hard to put into words how um, possible they've made it for us to actually say that this is our 24th year doing Camp New Dawn um, this August. And that would not be possible without the volunteers and... <clears throat> The financial support right yeah. we we get no reimbursement again for camp so we yeah. have to fundraise 100 percent of camp and we do not turn any child away based on ability to pay it's a very minimal fee of 25 dollars for a child to attend camp but some people cannot afford that and if if they can't afford it they're never turned away right and like rhonda said because of the generosity of this community we raise over about 35 40 thousand dollars annually annually to pay for the camp for the children. That's great. So it's Camp New Dawn. I guess you can find more information on the website yes, also. Yes, absolutely. And it happens at Camp Ecomath, which yes. is beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's a nice experience. It's a nice place to be, a nice place to heal. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. We had a nice time talking to them about all the programs they're offering, the brand new building that's in Kent County, and how they're serving the entire region at three locations. So go to their website, check them out, get some help if you need it, or just talk to them to find out what they might offer you.